Poco just released three value for money smartphones in the global market, that being the Poco X6, Poco X6 Pro and Poco M6 Pro. They all come with a rubber black case in the box as well as a 6 amp charging cable and a 67 watt charging block. Be sure to check the comment section for exact pricing as I don't have the prices at the time of making this video. But leaks suggest the M6 Pro will be the cheapest at around 229 euros, then the X6 at around 299 and the X6 Pro at around 349. So as always, they are all targeted toward users who don't mind some compromise, but for those who are looking for a strong contender to fit their budget. The X6 comes in blue, black or white. The X6 Pro comes in black, gray or yellow vegan leather. And the M6 Pro comes in purple, blue or black and is probably my favorite design of the lot. The M6 Pro is the lightest and thinnest, the X6 is just as thin, and the X6 Pro is the thickest and heaviest, but not by much. They all have plastic backs and frames, but they all offer an IP54 water splash protection. The screen on the X6 is protected by Gorilla Glass Victus, but for some reason, the X6 Pro and M6 Pro only have Gorilla Glass 5 protection. They all have the same sized 6.67 inch AMOLED display with razor thin bezels. The X6 and X6 Pro both have 1.5K resolutions, but the M6 Pro is limited to Full HD. They all support Widevine L1, Dolby Vision and HDR10 content, but only the X6 Pro supports HDR10+. The X6 and X6 Pro can both reach a peak brightness of 1800 nits, and while the M6 Pro's brightness is unspecified, I measured it to be quite similar. And they all have 1920Hz PWM dimming, 2160Hz instant touch sampling rates and 120 hertz refresh rates. When it comes to software, the Poco X6 Pro is the only device that comes with Xiaomi's latest HyperOS software, skinned over Android 14 out of the box. The other two will eventually be updated to the same, but for now they are stuck to MIUI 14, skinned over Android 13. Since they are all rocking global Xiaomi software, they of course all come with Google services and all of Google's features. HyperOS may look identical to MIUI, but Xiaomi's latest software now has more focus on interconnections between all other Xiaomi devices, improved performance and efficiency due to further optimizations, and it now takes up less system storage space. Speaking of storage space, they all come with up to 512 gigs of onboard storage, but only the M6 Pro has an option for up to one terabyte of expandable storage with the use of a micro SD card. They also all have dual SIM support, but it's worth mentioning that the M6 Pro only offers 4G connectivity, while the X6 series offers offers 5G. The X6 Pro also has the upper hand with Bluetooth 5.4 and Wi-Fi 6, while the other two are limited to Bluetooth 5.2 and Wi-Fi 5. All three support NFC, have IR blasters and pack in dual stereo speakers, but only the X6 and M6 Pro have headphone jacks. They all offer 67 watt Type-C wide charging, but the X6 has a slightly larger 5,100 milliamp hour battery compared to the other two's 5,000 milliamp hour cells. And since the X6 and X6 Pro both have four nanometer chipsets, they will most certainly be the most efficient devices here. The M6 Pro on the other hand makes use of a six nanometer run Helio G99 Ultra CPU with a max clock speed of 2.2 gigahertz. The four nanometer chip found inside the X6 is the new Snapdragon 7S Gen 2, which has a max clock speed of 2.4 gigahertz, but the star of the show is no doubt the very new four nanometer run Dimensity 8300 Ultra chipset, which powers the Poco X6 Pro. It has a max clock speed of 3.35 gigahertz, and its performance is on par with last year's flagship Qualcomm CPU, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So it's no surprise to see it receive flagship level scores in multiple different benchmark tests. And while the vanilla X6 got significantly lower scores, it still outperformed the M6 Pro. The Poco X6 Pro also outclasses the others since it makes use of flagship level LPDDR5X RAM and UFS 4.0 storage, as opposed to the standard LPDDR4X RAM and UFS 2.2 storage we see in the other two devices. But when it comes to selfie cameras, they are all virtually the same. As I'm sure you noticed earlier, they all have very small punch hole notches found at the top center of their screens. And within those punch holes sit identical 16 megapixel selfie sensors and they all take more than decent selfies during the day, though I have to say the X6 Pro offers better tonal range and detail, while the M6 Pro has the smoothest edge detection. 
What's up guys, this is Technic recording a 1080p 30fps selfie video on the latest three Poco devices, the X6, X6 Pro and M6 Pro, but unfortunately only the X6 Pro offers bokeh video when using the selfie cam. They can all shoot it up to 1080p 60fps selfie video, but 30fps seems to be the sweet spot when recording at night. Selfies at night come out average at best on these three Pocos, with all of them looking completely different and none of them looking fantastic. So none of them are great at taking selfies, but I do feel that the more advanced chipset found inside the X6 Pro does give it the upper hand in terms of post-processing. And just like with selfies, their main cameras are also very identical. They all have a triple camera setup, which consists of a 64 megapixel main sensor with optical image stabilization, an eight megapixel ultra wide camera, and a two megapixel macro snapper. The regular X6 seems to take the best macro shots, but the X6 Pro produces the most balanced ultra wide photo. Their main cameras can all shoot at 64 megapixel native resolution or bin down at 16 megapixels. And once again, the X6 Pro packs in more detail and balance. And the X6 Pro continues its winning streak when zooming in from two times all the way up to their max 10 times zoom levels. However, portrait mode seems to come out best on the M6 Pro. Bokeh video mode on the X6 Pro isn't the best, but it's the only one here that offers this feature. And while both the X6 and X6 Pro offer 4K video, they are both limited to 30 FPS. Unfortunately, the M6 Pro doesn't have a 4K option at all, but all of them can record 60 FPS video at 1080p resolution when using their main cameras. Ultra wide video is limited to 1080p and 30 FPS on all three phones, and all of them drop their frame rates at night to try brighten up the scene. Main video at night comes out noticeably better on the Poco X6 Pro, as do ultra wide photos when using night mode. Taking photos with their mains at night has the X6 Pro take another win, and once again takes the lead when zooming in from two times all the way up to 10 times. It continues to come out on top when taking night photos of a human subject and offers the best balance when taking a portrait photo at night. The Poco X6 Pro no doubt takes the best photos and videos whether using the back or front cameras, but that's only when compared to the other two devices here. The only thing that makes these results pleasing is the low price tag that comes along with it. That said, the X6 Pro offers quite a lot for its price, which makes it a better purchase when compared to the vanilla X6 and M6 Pro. Other than cameras, it has a much much better chipset with much faster RAM and storage. It's the only one here with Bluetooth 5.4 and Wi-Fi 6. And the cherry on top is that it comes with HyperOS out the box. But the regular X6 has a larger battery, better Gorilla Glass protection, and manages to squeeze in a headphone jack. The M6 Pro also has a headphone jack, and while it lacks 5G connectivity, it makes up for it with an option for expandable storage, and in my opinion, has the best design of the lot. I guess you can see where I'm going with this. The Poco X6 Pro should be the easy recommendation here, but why not include the better glass protection and headphone jack of the regular X6, and why not include the expandable storage and design of the M6 Pro? Come on Poco, why not just release one device that checks all of these boxes instead of leaving us with such a hard decision to make? Either way, all three of these new Pocos have something special for different consumers and they all do so at a very good price. So let me know which device you would rather pick up in the comment section down below. This is Tech Nick and I'll catch you in the next one.